if you were to boil the practice down to one word, the word would be heedfulness. After all, as the Buddha said, all skillful qualities have their, their foundation in heedfulness. They're rooted in heedfulness. And even the Buddha's last words were to attain completion through heedfulness. We hear the word, it sometimes can be translated as being uncomplacent. We tend to think of the negative side. It's basically a warning that there are dangers out there and you've got to be really careful. If you make a misstep, you could get yourself into really deep trouble. But heedfulness also has another side, a more positive side. After all, it's pointing to the fact that your actions do make a difference. And they can be very positive, make a very positive difference. There's that reflection about the heedful monks who think of death with every in and out breath. Not to be afraid of death, but they say, I could do a lot with this one breath I may have left. The time it takes to chew a mouthful of food. I could do a lot in the practice. What this is doing is focusing your attention on the positive things that can be done with the little amount of time you might have. And this doesn't have to be the little amount of time before death. It can also be the little amount of time you have when you're stopped at a stoplight, when you have a small break at work, when you're waiting for the meditation session to begin. It seems to have just a little bit of time, and with little bits of time like that, we tend to kill them. Well, there's nothing much I can do now, so I might as well just relax for a bit or whatever. But actually, there's a lot that can be done in little bits of time. Insights can come very suddenly and unexpectedly. So try to create the conditions for them, even if you have small amounts of time. In Thai, when they took over the word Bhamada from, from Pali, turned it into Brahmat, which is a Thai word. Brahmata means heedless. Brahmat means to underestimate. And it has that same double meaning. Don't underestimate your enemies, on the one hand, but also don't underestimate yourself. You've got potentials that you can develop, and you can do a lot of good with your potentials. This applies not only as you're sitting here meditating, using your ingenuity and your powers of observation to get to know the breath and to figure out what you can do with the breath energy. But you can use those same qualities as you go through the day. We all too often think of the practice simply as what we do when we're sitting with our eyes closed. But practice is practice everywhere. It's the same mind, same qualities of mind that you want to develop, simply in different circumstances. So when you're at work, you have opportunities to develop all the perfections. That's practice as well. You can focus on developing powers of patience and endurance, or you can focus on your discernment, because work does require discernment. question today about whether creativity was a, in line with the Dharma as you work, well, it's an exercise of your discernment. Again, all too often we think of discernment as simply observing things as they're happening. But you don't observe things, really, by just watching them. You have to get involved with them. You have to create good things out of them. Like what we're doing with the mind right now. If you want to observe the mind, you have to put it into a state of concentration. You don't just sit here watching it as it's doing willy-nilly whatever it's going to do. You have to direct it to an object. Ekata which is sometimes translated as one-pointedness, but the word aga in there can also mean gathering place. Give the mind one gathering place where all of its activities can focus. And try to figure out what will get the mind into a place where it really likes to be. Where would you really like to gather right now? And once you've gathered there, what's good about it and what's not so good about it? If it's not good, what can you change? Use your ingenuity. to change the breath, to change the way you focus, change the way you adjust the breath, 
There are lots of different ways of adjusting the breath. Sometimes you put a little pressure on the breath, other times you just pose an image in the mind and see how the breath responds. And then you pose another image to see how it responds then. And then for the fun of it, reverse the images just to see if that's any better. This is called using your ingenuity. You come up with things that you don't like in the meditation, okay, how do you work your way around them? How do you live with them? You've got a pain in some part of the body, okay, you work around it. You don't focus on it. And you begin to realize the extent to which a pain has an impact on the mind has an awful lot to do with how you engage with it. It's not just a fact that has nothing to do with your own involvement. There are potentials coming in from your past karma, but you've also got your present karma. Make the most of that. So even when you come up with situations you don't like, whether it's in the meditation or in your work or in your family life or in your responsibilities around the monastery. I know when I was with Ajahn Fuhr, it always seemed that his bouts of psoriasis came at really inconvenient times. Not that I ever wanted him to have a bout, but it always seemed that it was the worst timing in the world sometimes. And so I had to figure whatever else I was doing at the time, I just had to drop it. And then I began to realize the timing, what I thought was bad time, was simply it was getting in the way of my desires for what I wanted to do. So I figure out, okay, what is it that's making me miserable around this? Learn how to drop that. You can find you can live with a lot of situations you couldn't stand otherwise. As he would often say, what do you mean you can't do this? Is it going to kill you to do it? Well, no, well, then you can do it. You have to be up for whatever is presented. This, too, is a development of the qualities you need in the practice. Your powers of patience and endurance, your powers of equanimity. And think of these things as power. Equanimity is not just a weak indifference. It's being okay with whatever comes up and ready to deal with whatever problems come up as they arise, even when they're coming at really bad times and going against what you would rather, rather do. But it's a strength to have equanimity. So look at all the perfections that you could be developing in different ways. These are your opportunities. And so with this one breath here, what's the opportunity right now where you're meditating formally? So work at that. Make the most of what you've got. Make the most of this breath and then this breath. Really give it your full attention. As for other moments when you're not sitting here with your eyes closed, you can make the most of them too. Realize there's a lot of good that can be done each time you breathe in, each time you breathe out. Look for those opportunities. That's also what it means to be heedful. You're not just looking for dangers, you're looking for opportunities. Sometimes the opportunities come as really challenging, but you want to be up for the challenge. That's the positive side of heedfulness. So don't underestimate yourself. Don't underestimate the dangers out there, but also don't est underestimate the possibilities. The opportunities are out there. A lot of good can be done in the world. We don't have much time. As the Buddha said, someone who's had a long life, a hundred years, at the end of life, it's not that they have all hundred years right there. All the hundred years have gone, 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 and there's just this moment, this moment. It all seems so small at that point. To so realize that you've got this moment right now, it's an opportunity right now. Don't be heedless of the opportunities. Because little moments can open up large areas inside the mind, large areas of goodness inside of the mind, large areas of goodness in the world. So keep looking for those potentials.